Kelly Nee here with Eyes on the Game. I'm here at Mayweather Boxing Club being joined by the champ, Layla McCarter. Now, first off, uh, you had quite a busy year. I know not uh, as busy as you had anticipated, but can you kind of, you know, tell your fans about defending the title in June after winning it in March? Sure. Uh, I would have liked to be busier this year, but we had a couple good fights. I, I went to, in March, I went to Colorado and I won two more welterweight titles, you know, two of the titles that aren't being held by Cecilia Brackis. I've been trying to get a fight with her, as you know, um, for a long time, but then we went to Germany and defended those belts, and uh, I was supposed to pay, face a girl from Africa who couldn't get the visa, so I got a last-minute replacement. Um, bit of an awkward fight, but, you know, everything came out good, and it was a shutout virtually. So. And what do you mean by awkward? She, you know, she's a big girl, uh, tall, kind of an awkward style, and, you know, fighting people that are kind of out of my weight class. I'm not a natural welterweight. I'm naturally a lightweight. So I'm looking forward to moving back to the weight that I belong. And, you know, that's where I look the sharpest. And when do you think that you will be moving back down? I, I'm already there. I'm a natural okay. lightweight. So the next fight you'll be fighting back down? Yeah, I mean, whatever the opportunity presents itself, I'll, uh, I'll be willing to fight at welterweight, of course, anywhere from uh, 135 to 147. So... Any of those three weight classes right now is good for me. And I do want to first off talk a bit about Cecilia Brackus, like you mentioned. So what is going on? I mean, I feel like there are a lot of talks back and forth, but nothing, you know, coming to fruition. Yeah, there's a couple factors, you know, Cecilia Brackus, I don't know if you saw her fight on Saturday, um, but there's a good reason that Cecilia Brackus doesn't want to fight me, and I, I can't blame her. But on the other hand, the promoters also need to step up and start paying what money is right. You know, I've never actually received an offer to fight Brackus for any amount of money. You know, they just say that I want too much money. They ask me what I want, I tell them, and they say it's too much. But where's the counter offer? Where's the, uh, you know, um, but the fact is that the promoters need to stop chopping up the money and start paying the talent that are, that are putting on the show. And are you allowed to reveal how much money? Well, I'm just um, going to say that, you know, no promoter that I've spoken to for the Katie Taylor or for Brackus have been willing to put up more than 50000 And that's for Taylor. But uh, Brackus has not been willing, her promoter hasn't been willing to put up any money to fight me. And, I mean, have you gotten a chance to talk to Cecilia or, or even on Twitter? She hasn't really responded. No, we've never spoken directly, just through other people. And, um, you know, uh, you know, she's a good champion. She, 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 she got all the belts. She fought everybody that's there except for me. And now I think it's long overdue that we need to have a showdown to show who's the best fighter in the world. And I'm sure a lot of people would want to see that fight happen. Um, but in terms of, you know, that fight not being made, do you think, I mean, it's more her or just the promoter? A bit of both. Her promoter also knows it's an unwise fight for her to take because that will be her, her zero is going to go. I mean, you know, um, but I think that they also don't want to pay the money that it takes to get a good opponent. They're willing to uh, pay cheap and, and get cheap opposition, and that's what it's been for the last many, many years. So you think her legacy uh, won't be solidified unless she fights you? Not to those who know. You know, the few media out there that actually know women's boxing have, have followed from the start, uh, they, they know what's legitimate and what's not. Yeah. And, um, you know, everybody else is just new tuning into the game. So. Yeah, and I just, I read something out there that said you are basically the most feared or avoided, you know, women's boxer. Why do you think everyone's so afraid of you? I mean, obviously, aside from the given, because you're so good and so talented. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 people like to have a legacy, um, and it, it's hard to step up and face the best, but it's something that I always believed in my career to be the best you have to beat the best and I've always stepped up I've always gone in every, other people's countries other people's hometowns I didn't always come out on top of the decision early on but for the last over 11 years almost 12 years I'm I'm undefeated the same amount of time that Brackus has been a professional so um, you know you really have to prove yourself over and over again and I, I fought for pride my whole career now I believe it's time for me to actually make money out of this game and, and, and I think I deserve it more than some of these fighters that are just coming into the game with eight fights and, the, and they want to pay me the same as somebody like that. It's not fair. It's just not. And what would you like to tell those promoters to, you know, try to get a fight set up, like a big super fight set up? 
Well, if they want to promote a legitimate fight, meaning the best fighting the best, number one and the number two, they have to pull money out of their pockets and make it happen. They've got the budget with the TV. DAZN TV and Eddie Hearn, they have plenty of money with multi-billions of dollars out there, uh, multi-billion dollar deals. Um, so what is, you know, a hundred grand to give the best female fighter in the world? Is a hundred grand asking too much, guys? I mean, this is, this is crazy. Yeah, and, and to put on an exciting fight. You are an, an exciting fighter. I do know that you were, um, you may have taken a fight on two weeks notice or you were offered a fight, right, uh, this month? Right. Uh, Katie Taylor's management got in touch with my manager and asked if we'd be interested in fighting Taylor on the 15th of December on the Canelo fight in Madison Square Garden. Of course, I'd be more than interested to take that fight. Unfortunately, the maximum, maximum that we would have been able to push the purse would have been $50,000. And, you know, I just don't think that's good enough. I really don't. Because, you know, approximately there, they paid, uh, you know, Cindy Serrano almost that. And no offense to Cindy, she's a good fighter, but I beat her 10 years ago in her prime, and I did a better job of it than Katie Taylor did just last, you know, last time. Also, uh, you know, Jessica McCaskill, great fighter, gave her a good scrap. But the girl only had, uh, she was six fights, with uh, six wins and one, one loss. And, you know, sitting here with 60 fights and having done what I've done in my career, traveling, having trilogies in Canada, having, you know, knocked out the undefeated champion in, in South Africa, fighting all over the world and doing what I've done, I think I deserve to get paid at this point. Yeah, no, absolutely. Do you think maybe in 2019 a fight against Katie Taylor, would that be something on the horizon? I believe it's possible because her management said, well, r not right now, we don't have the budget on this show because Canelo, of course, is the main event and he's making most of the money, of course. But um, when she's the co-main event or the main event in a fight, I hope that Eddie Hearn and I hope that DAZN TV and, and all the other people involved will be willing to pay us a little closer to what we deserve and to make the big fight possible. I'm ready and willing any time to step up and beat, fight, not just fight, but beat any of these fighters out there today. Yeah. You know, Katie Taylor will be the best opposition out there to fight. I think that'll be a great fight, a great challenge, but I will come out on top. And if after that, you know, Cecilia Brackis wants to get back in there, then, you know, we'll beat her too and anybody else who wants to get in my way. And uh, I know, like you said, you're willing to always fight anyone um, and any time, basically. But aside from Katie and Cecilia, is there, you know, someone else that really intrigues you matchup-wise? Mm. You know, it's all about, like I said, it's about getting paid now. And those are the names that are in the, in the uh, big telev televised features right now. So that's where the money is. I mean, we could definitely make a fight with... Kelly Reese, Kaylee Reese, who put on a great fight with uh, Cecilia Brackis, but the question is, who's going to pay us for it? That's the question. Also, you know, there's Jessica McCaskill, also a great fighter, but she's only got eight fights right now, but she's willing to fight everybody. I respect her guts, and, uh, and I think that would be a great scrap, too. But the question is, again, you know, um, money. Exactly. Yeah, money does talk. Um, but also, uh, one of my last questions for you. Cecilia does always happen to uh, talk about you, c the current UFC women's featherweight champion, Chris Cyborg, and maybe a super fight between them. What are your thoughts on those call-outs? Well, I think it, it's... Uh I don't know, I'm not a fan of the mixed fights, and I think it's just another way to evade the number one fighter in her weight class in boxing. You know, this is boxing. So if you want to go and do a sideshow, you want to go and do wrestling, great, good for you. But I think it just means one more way to avoid fighting the best fighter and getting exposed. You know, if you saw her fight last Saturday, I mean, I hate to talk badly, but I don't think that those two fights on on TV did us any justice. For women's boxing, it was bad. Anyone who never saw women's boxing before is going to think we are all terrible because, you know, the so-called number one in the sport looked very amateur, very basic. And, and um, I think part of it has to do with, you know, having the right opposition in front of you. We don't know how good she can be until she gets in front of somebody who's good. So I'd like to find that out next year. How good is Cecilia Brackis? And luckily, next year, right around the corner, uh, my final question for you, Layla, uh, Wilder and Fury, that fight just passed. I know there's um, a lot of controversy as far as who should have won. What did you think? Uh, what did I think? I thought a draw was a good, good call on that one. Yeah. You know, um, it was a close... Fury definitely got the better of the most rounds. You know, he was winning more rounds. But with the two knockdowns 
And if you gave Wilder a round or two, he's, you know, it's a draw. So I, I thought that was a fair decision. I, you know, the count, a lot of people question Jack Reese's count. I honestly thought it was a decent count. It was good to give him a chance, and he got, he got up. He's a warrior. You know, I love Wilder. Um, I think he needs to uh, fix a few things, but he's my favorite heavyweight out there. Yeah, and no doubt would that rematch be amazing. But for your fans, what words do you have for them? You know, I, I want to thank everyone who's supported me all these years and everybody who's followed women's boxing through the years. Even the current ones that don't know who I am, maybe, or, or what has passed before them. Um, I'm just happy that there's so much support going on for women's boxing now, and I, I hope for bigger, better things in the future. Yes, and congratulations on all your continued accomplishments. Thank you so much.